What is going on everybody out there in the Tech Yes universe? We have two coolers right here. We got the Deep Cool Asa 3, because I don't know if I can pronounce the actual name without you know, YouTube hitting me up with a little yellow icon. And we've got here the Noctua D15. Now these are the two biggest coolers in the game for air cooling. And uh, right beside that, we've got the uh, RGB PC, which is gonna get hocked soon. And there's a little 1060 from Korea, if you guys saw the used parts on there. One of them's already gone, skis very soon. But two coolers. This one right here weighs in at 902 grams with no fans. That's the deep cool version. And then we've got the D15 weighing in at 982 grams with no fans. This has six heat pipes. The Asa 3 has seven heat pipes and it's a little bit lighter. And when you add the fans on both of these, you then come to 1222 grams on the Asa 3. And then the D15, we have 1335 grams. Now you're probably thinking it's a little bit uh, uglier than usual on the D15. And that's because we've added a uh, 140 millimeter redux fan instead of the original fan because this thing's coming out of storage. I was lucky I even found it buried away. But the Asa 3 from Deep Cool, it hopes to be the best air cooler money can buy, period. With them touting, at least in the emails that I got, they said, look, this thing will beat the D15 by one degree. And today we're gonna be putting these two coolers head to head as well as testing it against the good old H115i RGB Platinum, which is my favorite all-in-one cooler. I have uh, one of these in my main rig. I have these on my test bench. Anywhere I can use an H115i RGB Platinum, I do, and that's because it's a balance between awesome cooling performance and low noise. So we're gonna be testing out the noise on both of these and all the other intricates in between. So after spending a lot of time at testing these coolers in both different scenarios where we had maximum fan speeds and also out of the box settings on the Phantom Gaming X with the 9900K, we can pull up the results here because the most important one to look at is the uh, max fan profile speeds where we can then test Deep Cool's claims. And we can see here that the Asa 3 is scoring about two degrees better than the Noctua D15 when they're both maximum fan speeds. But keep in mind, they are using different fans and the coolers are slightly different, but for what it's worth, we can really see that they're virtually the same thing. Really big air coolers that will do a good job of keeping a 9900K under control. And now the funny thing is about the noise that we've got here, my decibel meter does measure the noise and it does give out a rough score but my ears do tell me that even though the deep cool fans came in with a lower DB rating, they were more annoying than the Noctua fans. I thought the Noctua fans weren't as invasive to my ears and they sounded better at higher fan profiles. But we're gonna pull up the next set of results here where we had the out of the box settings with the PGX on its default fan profiles. And these are gonna be popular over X570, X399, X299. This is a standard fan profile. And what we're seeing here is a big trade-off between these two. The Deep Cool Asa 3 is going for lower noise than the Noctua D15, but the D15 is coming in with much better temperatures. So in other words, if you're in the market for either of these two air coolers, and you didn't want to play with any settings in the BIOS, the D15 is going to give you better temperatures out of the box, and the Asa 3 is going to give you much better noise to the point where it was ridiculously low. It was basically like that of the H15i RGB Platinum. And now speaking of the H115i RGB Platinum, if you guys have followed us here for a while on the channel, you know it's pretty much one of my favorite coolers ever released. It's got the low noise, it's got the temperatures, and it's also got the bling. And now the temperatures out of the box on its low noise profile was pretty much scoring better than both these air coolers 
on their maximum 100% fan profile setting. Now for the thermal paste, I use the exact same thermal paste across all three different runs with using Deepcool's own solution. So that way we're keeping it apples to apples to apples. And so the air coolers are still a fair bit behind that of the water coolers. And when we also ramp the water cooler up to 100% fan speeds, it then scored well above that of both these air coolers. And now here's where I'm probably might, I don't know if this is an unpopular opinion or not, I'd prefer the all-in-one solutions much more than both these big air coolers. And the reason being is because we got so much more space around our motherboard now. And the D15, I had to test all three of these with one dim because the D15 had problems mounting in its traditional way on the PGX motherboard. Uh, even though it's got a little bit more clearance on the side of the cooler with a 63 mil versus 50 mil on the deep cool, the deep cool solution will still be able to clear RAM like the Corsair Dominator. You just have to mount your memory first before you mount the CPU cooler. But now with that out of the way, if you can mount these in your case and your configuration, then they are going to provide really good temperatures. And in the case of the deep cool solution, it's going to keep noises down. And it's easy to see why people still prefer air cooling over water cooling because you've got two extra elements that can go wrong in water cooling. That is water could leak and also you have a water pump that could fail. With these, you've only got the fans that can fail and it's a lot cheaper and easier to replace. In the water cooler's sake, you could lose your whole system potentially. With an air cooler, you're gonna notice things will just overheat and you'll probably thermal trip at worst and then you'll know something's wrong and you'll probably see the fan has stopped spinning and it needs replacing. But for me personally, the benefits of water cooling outweigh that of air cooling's benefits, and that is I get lower temperatures, better noise, and of course I've got more room to work around with my motherboard, where in the case of both these air coolers, they were coming really close to that bottom slot graphics card, where in the case of the D15, I had to mount it in a weird way, which completely blocked out the first PCIe slot. And that makes air coolers like these actually in a unique position. And I'm not gonna say a niche position because one thing that these have going for them is the price. For instance, the D15 on Amazon can be had for 90 USD and the Arsa 3 here can be had for $100 flat. In Australia, 123 AUD and 125 AUD. So the Deepcool solution is actually better value for Aussies than the D15 is. And also the Corsair Platinum, when we look at those prices, 165 USD and 219 AUD. So for Aussies, you're almost saving $100. And in the US, you're saving about 65 to 75 USD. Considering those high-end eight core CPUs are coming down in price, like the 3700X and the 9900KF, where I'm sure a lot of people are going to want a really good air cooling solution or a good water cooling solution, but the good water cooling solutions usually cost a lot more than those entry level or those crappy water cooling solutions, which I honestly don't recommend here on the channel for good reason. But ultimately wrapping things up with both these coolers, you're probably like, which one is the better air cooler? And after testing both of these, I would go for the deep cool solution, but it is important to note that this is like five years in the making and they really haven't done that much better of a job. It's pretty much the same design, copy pasted with a better aesthetic. And if anything, I would have liked Deepcool to have experimented with more RGB bling, really release something around that $100 mark that looked absolutely off the chain good. I mean, don't get me wrong, this looks really clean, but this can also look clean if you replace these uh, brown fans on it. So if anything, it's a decent cooler, good build quality. You also get really good thermal paste included and a really nice screwdriver. However, I still use my electronic screwdriver. But of course, if you're in the market for either of these, I would just go for whichever one's cheapest. They're both going to do a really good job of overclocking high-end CPUs, at least up to the 200 watts that we tested here today. Though if you do have any questions on your mind about this cooler, make sure you drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And speaking of questions, we now have today's question of the day, which comes from Do and Do, and they ask, can someone please tell me if the GPU vertical mount adds latency? I heard that the PCIe riser cable adds about one to two milliseconds of latency. And how much exactly it adds, I haven't tested yet, but I will tell you it does in a perfect world add latency because you are now extending the traces of that GPU communicating to the CPU. And so the more you extend that, the more latency it's going to add. 
I'd say it'd be very minuscule, but that being said, we have seen with vertical mounting GPU kits, the quality of the cable can make a difference between that GPU working properly and not working at all. So honestly, with vertical mounting kits, you do have to spend a bit of money to get a quality cable and make sure that that's working properly with the CPU. If it's not, then technically it could not only add a bit of latency, then it could give you problems as well. But if you are looking to get the most competitive gaming experience possible, then I wouldn't be putting that cable at all near your GPU. And with that aside, I hope you enjoyed today's video of these two massive air coolers. And if you did, then be sure to hit that like button for us, but also let us know in the comment section below what you think of massive air coolers like this. Would you just rather spend the extra money on a water cooler or would you just say down your overclocks so you can go with a cheaper air cooler and also save some space in the process. But speaking of a cheaper air cooler, I know some of you guys are gonna be like, where's the snowman? Uh, those, all those snowmans I ordered in, they're all gone. I've actually ordered a few more in because we've got some more tests coming with the snowman because people are like, look, Brian, there is a six heat pipe version of the snowman. So when we get that in, we'll be doing another video on the snowman. And we're gonna be comparing the LED fan against the six heat pipe version, against the original version, against these two massive air coolers right here. So do stay tuned for that. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Sub button's down there. Might wanna ring the bell if you wanna see it as soon as it drops. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.